Well, we're coming to the end of our Christmas devotions, but I wanted to uh, uh, ask this question. What will you do with Jesus? What do you do with the narrative of the Christmas story? Look at all the responses that we saw as we looked through the Christmas story. Uh, we have Mary, who is uh, spoken to by an angel. Zacharias, who is spoken to by an angel. And we see their responses. You know, for Zacharias, at first he was filled with unbelief. Uh, but, of course, God convinced him. Um, we have Mary who said, Let it be according to your will. Be it unto me according to your will. We have Joseph who had some struggles, but he, uh, he believed the angel and he did what God said. We have the testimony of the angels to the shepherds. The shepherds believed. They responded. They went down to see the child. And they went and proclaimed it everywhere. We said that it didn't look like much of the town of Bethlehem actually responded. They were amazed at the shepherds, but we don't read anything about a whole group of people believing in the baby Jesus at the time. We have the testimony of, the, uh, of Simeon in the temple, which we looked at. And we have the testimony of Anna, who spoke to all those in Jerusalem concerning the that this was the Christ, the one, the Redeemer. We don't see much of a response there either. We have the testimony of the star in the sky, and the wise men, and their testimony in the city of Jerusalem. And we don't see much of a response there. As a matter of fact, they knew where you would be born, and none of them went. The only one that went was Herod with his soldiers, or he sent his soldiers. But not to worship the Christ child, but to put him to death. So here's the thing that often we will discover that when the gospel is preached and we can zip ahead 30 years and look at the life of Jesus Christ and we see one who preached, of course, the good news. The good news. Repent and believe the good news. He, he came and, and, he, and he verified it through the miracles and, and we see that there, what the response was there. There were some who believed there were some who said, uh, who rejected it outright, and some who were indifferent, and there are some who will be opposed. So do you think today that if you're going to stand with Jesus Christ and share the word of God, that everybody's going to believe? Of course not. That everybody will be opposed? No, of course not either. But you will find yourself in situations at times where people will accept the message and people will reject the message and there are times when people will reject you because of the message we need to understand that and appreciate that that's part of the reality if you're going to walk with God um, we see all those different kinds of reactions with the story of the birth of Christ and of course we see it with the death of Christ and with the life of Christ um, so Jesus said some interesting words. He said uh, this when he was talking about uh, people either being with him or not. In Luke eleven twenty three, it says this, He that is not with me is against me. Now those are strong words because they leave you in a place where either you are with Christ or you're against Christ. I remember my first wife, um, somebody was visiting and says, Listen, he said, I'm not, you know, I'm not with Christ. I don't want to be with Christ. And then my wife said to this person, well, I guess you're anti-Christ then. What? No, I'm not anti-Christ. Well, she said, you're either for him or you're against him. Which are you? And that's exactly what Jesus said. He said this, he that is not with me is against me. And he that does not gather with me scatters. That's in Luke 11.23. So are you a gatherer or are you a scatterer? Are you gathering with Christ or are you scattering against Christ? You might say, well, no, I'm just going to be in Mr. Neutral or Miss Neutral in life. Neutral you cannot be. You will either be for Christ or you will be against Christ. And so to be indifferent is to be against Christ, you see. That's the reality of it. 
Now at one point the Apostle Paul was preaching and he went to a place called Berea. And it says in Acts 17.10, the brothers immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night to Berea. And they had to go because they were under attack from other uh, from the people of the town that they were in at the time. And they had, uh, um, in Thessal that was in Thessalonica. So uh, it says, they sent them to Berea by night. And they came and went into the synagogue of the Jews. It says this, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So these were the Jews that were in Berea. It says they were more noble than the Thessalonians. They had rejected the message. They received the word and they searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. They truly checked it out. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks and of men, not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached to Paul of Berea, they came there and stirred up people. And immediately the brothers sent away Pauls to go to the sea, but Silas and Tim Timothy stayed there. And so we can see the reaction. There were some who believed and some who were opposed. Now, we can't avoid that people will be opposed to the gospel. That is part and parcel of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are people who refuse to believe the Christmas story. Even though there is tremendous evidences to it, it was prophetically said where the Christ child would be born. And sometimes it doesn't matter how much evidence there is. And really it isn't about evidence. Some people refuse to believe. You take the, the ones who were fed, 5,000 people plus were fed with fish and bread miraculously. And you know what they came and said to Jesus after that? If you show us a sign, then we'll believe. He already gave them a sign. He gave them many signs. And the Pharisees would continually come to Jesus and said, If you show us a sign, then we'll believe. You know, I've already said this, but the, the wise men who studied the scriptures saw the star, believed, and they traveled. They dedicated themselves to go through all of that journey and the many years they gave up and the sacrifices they made just to see the Christ child. They believed. So my friend, my encouragement to you is to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are either going to be a gatherer or a scatterer. Why would you be a scatterer if you don't gather? Well, the reason is, is because you will be pointing people, whether by your lifestyle or by your lips, Either way, you're going to be pointing people away from Jesus. And what you need to be doing is pointing people to Jesus because Jesus Christ is really the Son of God who did come into the world where God became a man, conceived within the Virgin Mary, and born in a stable in Bethlehem, and grew up and taught and preached and did miracles and died on the cross for our sins, rose from the dead, ascended back into heaven and sent the Holy Spirit to live in those who believe in him. What will you do with Jesus? The old hymn says, what will you do with Jesus? Neutral you cannot be. Someday your heart will be asking, what will he do with me? In a sense, in one sense, the world puts Jesus on trial and decides either yes or no. The question is, is what will you do with Jesus? You know, Pilate, who was the uh, representative, the governor, who was the representative of Rome, when he was faced with Jesus Christ, he was told, his wife sent him a, a message in a dream, that she had a dream, and said, have nothing to do with that just man. And Pilate wanted to let him go. But what stopped Pilate from letting him go? Fear of people. Fear of losing his position. 
because the Pharisees and the rulers and the crowd called out. Pilate did everything to try and get, get him off. He got him beaten and whipped really badly, brought him before the crowd said, Behold a man. He offered them Barabbas instead. He offered them to either take Barabbas or to take Christ, to free them, hoping that they would take Christ. But no, they took him as a notorious man, a robber. He did everything he could to get out of it, except to make the right choice. And Pilate eventually took his own life, drowned himself in a lake. He didn't gain anything by this. Neither will anyone else. Either you're for Christ or you're against him. What will you do with Jesus? Will you, like the shepherds, embrace him, believe him, and proclaim him? Will you, like the wise men, be willing to leave everything and follow him? Will you be like the Bereans who are more noble, who searched the scriptures, and many of them believed? Or will you be like, the, in this case, the Thessalonians, who pursued Jesus, uh, Paul, and the apostles who were preaching the gospel, to other cities to persecute them? Are you for Jesus Christ or are you against him? I believe that in these days that we will see more people who will be either for or against. I believe the lines will be drawn a little more sharply and that it will cost more to follow Jesus Christ. We are finding that our secular society is more and more marginalizing Christians and more and more rejecting them and rejecting morality. And Christians are being attacked because they take a moral stand on abortion, on sexual issues, on gender identity. These things are buzzwords in our present society and Christians who want to follow the Word of God are going to find themselves on the outs with much of our social s structure and what's being happening, what's being developed. What will you do? Will you be for Jesus? Or will you be against him? Will you scatter or will you gather? Please don't think that you're going to walk a middle road here. There is no middle road. Jesus said it a long time ago. He who does not gather with me scatters abroad. What will you do with Jesus Christ? I pray that God will give you the grace. I pray that you will discover a, a, a call of God upon your life that will cause you to stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. That will say, I am a follower and a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I have nowhere else to go. You know, when Jesus said some hard words in John chapter 6, words that were hard for them to understand, nobody can come to me except they were given of my Father, Jesus said. The Bible tells us, and then he, he told them they had to they eat his flesh and drink his blood or they'd have no life in him. Of course he was talking about spiritual things. He explained that he was talking about spiritual things. But they found these hard sayings. And from that time, many turned away. Jesus turned to his own disciples and said, Will you also go away? And Peter said this, Lord, where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we believe you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter acknowledged, Lord, there isn't any place else to go. He could see through the circumstances and he knew that Jesus Christ was who he said he was and that there was no place else to turn to. And my friend, I want you to know this. There is no place else to turn to. There's only been one Savior born in a manger. Only one Savior that went to the cross. This was the one that the skies opened up for. This is the one that all the, the hosts in the, of heaven declared on that hillside to the shepherds. This is the one that the star appeared for and caused uh, wise men, Gentiles, from far away to pack their bags and come and visit the Christ child. This is the one who is to be worshipped. This is the one who declared himself Jehovah, I am. And he declared it more than once. This is the one who said, All authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. This is the only Savior that there is. There is no plan B. There is no alternate Savior. There is only one way. And so with all that the Christmas story uh, testifies, and all of the Gospels and all their messages, and all of the New Testament, 
and then all the saints down through the ages who have testified of Jesus Christ and have lived moral lives as a result of a walk with God. There is a testimony that stands, and it stands to you and the rest of the world. The question is, is what will you do with Jesus? Will you come to him? Will you trust him? Will you find eternal life in him? Will you serve him with all your heart and soul? Will you gather with Christ? Or will you be one who rejects and turns away? Don't be one who turns away because there's nowhere else to go, friends. If you turn away, you turn away to judgment. If you turn away, you turn away to sin, to go deeper in sin. If you turn away, you turn away from life itself and you embrace death and the loss of your soul. Death and being cut off from God for eternity. If you turn away, oh, what a sad thing it is for someone to turn away from Jesus. We have the story of the rich young ruler who comes running to Jesus. And he said, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Good Master. Jesus rebukes him and challenges him and tells him, Don't let your wealth keep you. Give it all away and come follow me. And the man went away sorrowful, for he had many riches. The Bible says Jesus loved him. He loved him. Now, I don't know if the rich man, that rich young man, ever turned back to God. I have a hope that he did. But his immediate response was, Oh, no, my riches are more important than you, Jesus. Can I encourage you with all my heart and all my soul today to think about all that we've looked at in the messages of the Christmas story? And understand that God is calling us to a place where either we trust Christ or we don't. We either accept Him or we reject Him. We cannot be neutral. We are either gathering with Him or we are scattering. My prayer for you, my friend, is that you become a gatherer. Someone who walks with God. Because if you will walk with Jesus Christ, you will be a gatherer. You will be pointing people to Him. Your life and your lips will point to Jesus Christ. That is why Jesus said, whoever is ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of on that day. So embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. Pilate made a choice that just devastated his life. He thought he was protecting his governorship and everything, but he fell out of favor with Rome shortly after that and went back and drowned himself in the lake. My friend, there's nothing but darkness if you walk away from the Lord Jesus Christ. So all my heart and soul is to encourage you at the conclusion of this little Christmas season is that you take every message that has been given in the scriptures concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, His birth, His entrance into the world, God becoming man, to win you, to save you, with all with the purpose of going to the cross, that you would embrace the Lord Jesus. You would believe in Him. You would trust in Him. You would give yourself away to Jesus. And that you would be wise like the wise men who come looking for Jesus Christ. You would be like the shepherds who take that testimony, believe it, and release it to the world. Like Simeon and Anna in the temple who proclaimed and the message and who worshipped the Christ child uh, I tell you Christmas is good news that Christ came into the world but the other half of it is all summed up in this verse that Paul writes in Timothy Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners Christ Jesus came into the world is Christmas to save sinners is Easter. But it's all together. It's, the message is all the same. It is about Jesus Christ. It is about receiving Him, trusting in Him. That's why John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become the children of God. The previous verse says he came to his own and his own received him not but as many as did receive him now the sad reality is Jesus said wide and broad is the way to destruction and many go in it 
but narrow is the gate to life and few there be that find it. Oh, my friend, find the narrow gate. Find the door and come in. Come in to Jesus Christ. Though the door is narrow, it is wide enough for you. And you can come by faith to Him today and be certain of salvation. Or you cannot come. And I'll tell you, you can be certain of damnation. It's one way or the other. It's up or it's down. It's light or it's darkness. It's Christ or it's death. Devil and hell all wrapped up together. Flee to Jesus Christ. Be a gatherer and not a scatterer. And call others to come and repent and believe. Now in the proclamation of the message, some will believe and some won't. And sometimes a person can get very discouraged. Did you know that Isaiah was called to preach? And after, just as soon as he was called to preach, God told Isaiah, I'm going to send you to a people who aren't going to listen to you. They won't believe you. You can read that for yourself in Isaiah 6. That's what he says. Their hearts will be hard. They will not listen. And so Isaiah largely preached to people who wouldn't listen. And you might say, well, that's the end of that story. Poor Isaiah. No fruit from all that. All that preaching and that prophesying and everything else. But I want you to know that hundreds, thousands, and millions probably have been saved through the testimony of Isaiah. God knows what he's doing. And while it may seem at times when nobody will listen, and at times it seems as if there'll never be fruit, you can trust the living God. You can see that God will honor his word. His word will go forth and people will be judged by it. And people will be saved by it. But my cry out to you today is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your trust in Him. Don't be found on the wrong side of this one. Make sure you embrace the one who was born in the manger, who went to the cross, who died for your sins and mine, and rose from the dead. And now He saves. And He can save you today. And he can save your neighbor. He can save your family member. They need Jesus Christ. There's no other way. So I encourage you to be faithful and trust God with the results. There will be those who will be saved. If you walk with God, you will affect their lives. That's the conclusion of the uh, Christmas message. I want you to be blessed by it and to uh, be touched and drawn to Jesus Christ and put him first in your heart and soul and have the right response. Find yourself on the gathering side, not on the scattering side. May the Lord bless you. Amen. This song is called Choose Life. A choice is set before you now Living or dying Blessing or cursing And you know the time has come around Turn from your fighting Rest in His mercy Choose life that you might live The life that He gives he gives you forever Choose life the way that is true And the one who chose you Your Father in heaven Choose life Trust the Lord with all your heart With all of your soul all of your being Hold on Listen and obey Surrender your life Into His keeping Choose life That you might live The life that He gives He 
gives you forever Choose life the way that is true From the one who chose you Your Father in heaven Choose life And the weight you're under You stand right there and say, Choose life that you might live, the life that He gives, He gives you forever. Choose life the way that is true, from the one who chose you, your Father in heaven. Oh, with all my heart and soul is my passion and desire that you would choose life and that others would choose life. And as we proclaim the gospel, we know some will choose life and some will not. Don't let that deter you. I told you this story before, but uh, a man who came to share the gospel with me, when I was troubled, when I was certain first that God was chasing me because I had come under conviction and then I rejected I said no God is not chasing me there's no such thing God sent somebody that very day and that man came and talked to me didn't know who I was said the Holy Spirit told me to talk to you and uh, when he spoke to me about Jesus I was totally floored but I didn't let on I cursed at him told him to get lost he left thinking he probably made a mistake but I got saved that day. So you don't know. You don't know what will happen when you share the word of God. I'll see that man in heaven someday. I've never met him. I don't know where he is now. But I'm going to see him in heaven. I think he'll be surprised. You are here. Yes, my friend, I'm here. Because you shared. You gathered. You gathered. And I got saved. You never know where your testimony will take you and where it will land and what fruit it will produce. Somebody will be found in heaven if you walk with God. Choose life for yourself and proclaim life to others regardless of what their immediate response is. Just trust the Lord with it. Be found faithful. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Our next devotion uh, you may be seeing this at a later date, but I did that whole um, ser series on the Holy Spirit and there was one message left and it's a sin against the Holy Spirit and it's really, this is a lead up to that one. The sin that is unpardonable that's against the Holy Spirit will be the next devotion. Serious one, for sure.